Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again, and to start things thus start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high functioning autistic. I am obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did for his. I really hope I didn't procrastinate for too much, because I know how some of you are just desperate to see more. So I Severely apologize for being a bit, like, delayed, if that's the right way to put it. And for this video, I'm going to introduce three new characters. Well, two characters, and the very first creature that I've made in my Leviathan universe. Which you could find on my blog, in terms of illustrations. So if you guys bear with me, I will be reading... The two characters and one creature, and I hope you guys could just, you know, you know how it is. Here it is. Captain Cosmic. Real name, none. Height, 30 feet. Weight, 2.5 tons. Status, anti-hero and rival of Captain Space. Base, quirky dimension, mobile. Intelligence, two brains. Behavior. Loopy, protective, and prideful. She'll always try to defend all innocents. Lethality, only during a fight. Weaknesses, low IQ, and rejection. Powers, she has similar powers as Captain Space. She wields a reintegration gun that can turn dust back into organic matter. She also travels across time and space in her own starship, which she simply named the Twisty Star. Eyes, bright brown, hair, blackish brown, and scruffy. Origin. In the quirky dimension, the native Captain Space is rather an imperfect duplicate of her, known only as Captain Cosmic. One day, Captain Cosmic decided to travel to the futuristic dimension, where the evil Darella Victors learned of her existence and tricked her into fighting her default counterpart, Captain Space. Luckily, Captain Space revealed to Captain Cosmic about all the things Dorella had done in the past, and Captain Cosmic decided to defeat Dorella and send her back and sent her back to her mortality starship with a single throw. Since then, Captain Cosmic will do anything all that she can to help Captain Space and other individuals with different problems and scenarios. Costume, she wears an imperfect version of Captain Space's uniform. Themes, solitary with Captain Space and others. Original inspiration, Captain Space and DC's Bizarro. Sorry about the hesitation and such. I just, I'm just trying my best to make sure this works. Next one, Dagger 2. Real name, Rosie Chains the Second. Height, 6 foot 1. Weight, 176 pounds. Status hero and duplicate daughter of Dagger. Base, default earth and mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior, loving, willful, and protective. She will always care for her family. Lethality, only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses, her love for her family. Powers, she possesses the same powers as Dagger, excluding her personality. Eyes, bright blue. Hair, light blonde in chin length. Origin. One time, Dagu ar argued with Goddess that she should bring back her miscarried daughter for a chance at mercy. But when Goddess brought her to life, Dagger learned that her unborn daughter was actually a duplicate version of herself, and Dagger passed out in the process. After regaining her consciousness, Dagger decided to name her duplicate daughter Rosie Chains at the second and Dagger II. When the murderous Axe planned to perform another massacre in New York, the two Daggers and Fear teamed up to defeat the mass murderer before anything worse happened. Since then, Dagger II would do all that she can to defend both her family and her heroic honor code. Costume. She wears the same clothes as Dagger. Teams, solitary with her family and other heroes. Order inspiration, Dagger. 
This one is going to be a creature that you guys might be impressed with, depending on how you would perceive it and such. Here it is. The Egyptian Dune Worm. Real name, none. Length, 100 to 300 feet. Weight, unrevealed. Status, villain and worm variant. Base, the Sahara Desert. Intelligence, half a brain. Behavior, spends its life either hunting or mating, with hunting being the more, the m most often. Usually travels in swarms of 100 to 200 members. Lethality, extremely dangerous to anything involving meat. If needed, it can also decide to be a scavenger and a cannibal. Weaknesses, nuclear weapons, plasma weapons, and weapons of extreme cold. It's easily blinded and easily deafened. Powers. It has great size and strength, eight eyes, sharp teeth, acute senses, can burrow at great speeds, has a long prehensile tongue, three mouth flaps, and a strictly ravenous and carnivorous diet. Eyes. Green and gold in a total of eight. Hair. None. Origin. The Egyptian dune worm is one of the species that survived the same disaster that left the dinosaurs inactive for a time. It almost always travels in swarms and is always hungry. Its worm-like body is covered with purplish-brown scales that protect it like a suit of armor and has a horrific head that opens up like a revolting flower with three flaps. It has eight eyes, two behind the mouth and two inside each flap of his mouth with the smaller eyes closer to the jaws. It has teeth used for ripping and slashing, and wields a long greenish tongue using, used for grabbing prey at a short distance. In the summer, the Egyptian dune worm would find a mate to reproduce with, and a single Egyptian dune worm couple can have an average of 50 eggs at a time. The female would eventually kill its spouse when the babies have hatched and she'd share the cadaver of her mate with her new offspring. Once the summer ends, the Egyptian dune worm would resume hunting for prey, which is anything that involves plenty of protein. Costume? None. Teams? It usually travels in swarms. Original inspiration? Graboids. Well, I hope you guys appreciated the three stuff that I introduced. And I'm sorry if I still don't look visually appealing. I am literally improvising with all I've got. And I really hope that you guys appreciate the stuff I have to introduce as of so far. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. And um, if and until next time, I'm Leviathan. Hope you guys have a fine rest of this month and so forth. And until next time, in transmission.